In this video, we're going to talk about the TX textures and the benefit of using them and how to create them using the make TX uh, command line. And I'm going to illustrate this by um, showing the logs and explaining what Arnold does uh, under the hood. So I have uh, my images, which are located here. So these are the uh, four images. Uh, we've only used three so far. And this is the output logs for, for Arnold. And I'm going to hit render at this point. And you can see it's going to start the process. And then there is a, um, uh, a step here called generated TX4. And then the file name and then generate generated TX4 and then the file name. And what happened is Arnold uh, found all the textures and then converted them into this format .tx, and it is uh, it is very uh, it's much much faster to use this format because it has automatic mip mapping. So if you have a very high resolution textures like 16k or 8k, and you're only viewing um, them very far away. Arnold will know what mip map level to read from that texture, so it only reads. Um, the appropriate resolution and that makes it much faster to read and it's much more efficient. And every time we hit the render, Arnold would will try to uh, create the convert the textures and reuse them. And if uh, if it found that there is a TX file, it will skip read it, it will skip the conversion and use this uh, this one. And there is a few attributes, few controls in the render settings to control this behavior. So if I switch to the out context and select the Arnold node and go under the texture tab and under the uh, properties of the render settings under textures, there is this uh, auto generate TX textures and auto mip map. And this tells Arnold to automatically pre convert all the textures. And this uh, this checkbox here tells Arnold to reuse the TX to use a TX texture instead of a JPEG if it found one. So if our input here, even if we uh, use a JPEG at the end, if there is in that same folder a file called TX, Arnold will automatically switch to that. And I'm going to uh, show the, um, the command line version of how to generate textures and if we go to, if we browse to the uh, installation of the H2A plugin and go under scripts bin, there's this uh, command line here called make TX. And um, Arnold is using pretty much the same um, uh, functionality that this command line has. And we can also um, help in the process of uh, when we create textures, we can help by converting all the textures into TX and that removes some of the overhead when uh, of how fast the render can start. And if you're in, in a studio, this would make a, a lot of um, uh, speed up because uh, the process will happen at the creation time of texture or whenever an artist published textures, uh, the uh, there is a tool that would kick off all the co the conversion process or the generation of the TX textures to be used instead of having Arnold to generate uh, each one, convert each one at render time. And uh, the the way I would use it uh, in, under Linux is I am going to create a new shell, and we first need to add this. Um, this path here to the environment variable. So we can do something like this. We can uh, say export and then path equal the path to the to the location here, which is this one, and then comma dollar path. And this means append this new path here to the existing environment path. And if I do this and execute it, I will now have um, access to the make the access from the command line and I don't have to browse to this location to access it. So I'm going to type in make TX. You can see we get all these uh, options here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the uh, the folder where I have the my textures and I'm going to delete the one that Arnold generated. So I'm going to delete these guys. I'm going to copy the path and browse to it and I'm going to clear it. 
and do an LL. So now I have these textures. And um, uh, to do convert them to a TX, we simply call the make TX command and the name of the texture. And it will automatically convert, it will automatically start generating a TX and it is now done. And um, we can either, once we are done with converting all of them, so let's do the diffuse. Should take a few seconds. And let's do the bump. So now I have all of them converted. And in the shader, I can simply use the TX for the bump. The TX for the specular. I did not do the TX for the specular. It's fine. We can use the same one for the bump just to test with and for the diffuse. And now if I go to the render settings and uncheck um, used uh, existing TX textures, because what this will do is if it found if we have a JPEG texture, it will automatically the read the TX, but because we are explicitly uh, giving it the TX, I want to uncheck this and uh, show you something in the logs. And now I have it here. If I hit render again, we should, uh, we, we will not see any textures being converted because we're providing Arnold with everything. And that makes uh, the render the the startup time for for the render much faster especially when you have a lot of textures and uh, one last thing i want to show how to add the environment variable uh, the path to your environment so i'm going to create a new shell or let's use this one so here i'm going to type in gedit and we're going to add them to the bash rc file and right now it's empty, and I can simply paste the uh, the command to export this. And then every time, now if I save it, uh, it will be available anytime I want, and uh, we can use it to convert the textures. And in in production, you generally want to do the to do this as part of the texturing pipeline or publishing the textures. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.